Holy Spirit, come and fill every one of us today in Jesus' name. The great news is that when we look up to God in prayer and we ask for God's Spirit, God comes down. We look up, God comes down. It's estimated it takes about three seconds to make a real first impression on somebody. What a first impression the Holy Spirit made on that day of Pentecost. Let me read to you from Acts chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. What an entrance. God coming in power to these 120 disciples. Notice how God comes. He comes, as it were, from heaven. Not necessarily the sky, but above and beyond us. He breaks in and he comes to us by his Spirit. So the question is, who is the Holy Spirit? A lot of people struggle to understand the Holy Spirit, particularly as you can't see him. Well, here we have a couple of emblems or symbols of what the Holy Spirit is like. First, he's described as wind. He comes like a violent wind. What does that signify? I believe it signifies the uncontainable power of God. God coming like a mighty wind. Come again, Lord. And then it talks about him. That word wind can also be translated breath. He's the breath of God. He's the one who can literally breathe life into us and give us new life and new birth and new purpose. He's wind. He's the breath. But also, he's described as fire. What does fire do? Well, fire burns. What does fire need to burn up in our lives? Well, rubbish, stuff that's holding us back, stuff that's messing up our lives. And so we could say that the Holy Spirit is the purifying love of God. He's the holy breath or wind of God. But it's important that although we focus on these impersonal images, we need to see that the Holy Spirit is not just a force. Some people think that Holy Spirit's a bit like the Star Wars, the force be with you. And although the Holy Spirit is very powerful, he is intensely personal. He wants to have a relationship with every single one of us. Jesus made that clear before he was going to go to be with the Father in heaven. Prior to his crucifixion, prior to his resurrection, he needs to comfort his disciples with the thought that he is going to go to be with the Father and they're going to be left. And he uses these fantastic words. I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. I will not leave you orphans I will come to you. That's a wonderful promise there. It's saying, Jesus is saying, I've been your counselor or your helper, the one who's been alongside you, but I'm going to send another. And that word another in the Greek means another like me, but separate from me. I'm feeling a little bit rich this morning. And I've got two 20 pound notes. I know, amazing. Now, I can assure you that these two 20-pound notes are different, but they are identical. If I was to go into a restaurant with this 20-pound note, it would do just the same as if I went and paid with this 20-pound note. Agreed? Yeah. Why? Because although they're two different notes, they are absolutely identical in worth, in value, in every way. And what Jesus is saying is something absolutely wonderful. He's saying, disciples, don't worry. I've got to go... To heaven to be with the Father. But don't worry, I'm going to send another different from me, but just like me. And he's going to come and represent me perfectly. What I would do if I were here physically present with you, now the Holy Spirit is going to do. Now, you know, that was incredibly good news for the disciples. Because they had seen Jesus miraculously feed 5,000. He'd walked on water. He'd raised the dead. He cleansed the lepers. He'd healed the sick. He'd totally transformed their lives. He was the most remarkable person who ever lived on planet Earth. And he's saying to his disciples, don't worry. I am now with you physically, 
But when the Spirit comes, I can be with you wherever you go because I'm sending another counselor to represent me. That's a glorious promise. And that's not just a promise, yeah. That's not just a promise for the disciples. It's a promise for us today. We can know that now, because of Pentecost, God's Spirit is on the earth. In one sense, we don't need to call him down because he's come. We don't have to wait 10 days. We can receive him now. He's God who is everywhere present all of the time. So if we look up and God has come down, what do we need to do? Number three, we need to receive him in to our lives. You see, it's tragedy to have God sort of outside and not changing us on the inside. You see, although the Holy Spirit is powerful, he waits to be invited in and welcomed. Jesus put it this way, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. In other words, you've got to have a thirst or a desire for God to come and change you. The question is, why do we want to do that? If you dared invite the Holy Spirit into your life, what would he do? Well, the answer is only good. Like to, you look at this glass, two problems with it. Number one, it's got dirty liquid. And number two, it's largely empty. That's how I would describe my life before I became a Christian and invited the Holy Spirit in. All kinds of dirt and shame and guilt and fear. And also I was lacking in power and purpose to fulfill the reason I was born. At the age of 19, I made a decision to invite Jesus Christ to come into my life. I surrendered to him, and he came in by his Holy Spirit, and he changed me. Yeah. He did a marvelous work of cleansing me. All my guilt, all my shame, it's like my slate was blotted clean. It felt like I was literally being washed from the inside out. Being given new life where there was death. And God can do the same for you if you invite him in. But the day of Pentecost is, is more than that. The emphasis in Acts chapter 2 is that they were not just clean disciples, but that the Holy Spirit came on them and filled them so that they were absolutely drenched, saturated, and overflowing with the life of God. That's what Pentecost is about. Amen. And the great news, that's not just for them, that's for us. It says all of them were filled with the Spirit. All of us can be filled with the Holy Spirit today. Well, over the last 20 years since we started the church, we've had the privilege of seeing hundreds of people come in, all kinds of different backgrounds, nationalities, age groups. And what we've seen is that many, many people have experienced the life-transforming, miracle-working power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We've got a small group who just volunteered to come and show you the headlines of their stories and how God has changed their lives. Let's watch this. 